What is up everyone? I'm Nick, as you probably already know. This channel is Swiftful Thinking, where we cover all things Swift and Swift UI related. And in this video, we're gonna look at adding sound effects to our application. Now the logic for these sound effects is actually not technically Swift UI. It's kind of just Swift related. But a lot of people that are taking my courses are beginners in Swift in general. And knowing how to add sound effects to your app is definitely very important. So we're gonna take a look at how to add a very, very simple sound effect to our app when we click a button. All right, so we are back in our Xcode project and let's right click on the navigator, create a new file. This will be a Swift UI view and let's call this Sounds Bootcamp. Go ahead and click Create. Once you're inside, click Resume on the canvas and let's get coding and to start off this video let's set up our screen which is going to be super simple we're going to have a v stack open the brackets and we're going to have two buttons let's do a button here and let's use the string protocol with an action and this will say play sound let's click enter on the action we'll leave it blank for a second and then we're just going to copy this and paste it one more time because we're going to have two different sounds, so we'll say play sound one, play sound two. All right, let's give this VStack a little bit of spacing, maybe 40, just to space out the buttons. And to manage our sounds, we are going to create a class. So at the top here, I'm going to create a class, and we're going to call it sound manager. And then we'll open the brackets. And if you've been following my courses so far, most of the time when we create a sound manager, we make it conform to observable object. And then we would initialize it in the view with an at state object, var, and we would say sound manager, and we'd set it equal to a new sound manager. So the reason we normally use this at state object and at observable object is because when things change in this class, and usually it's a published variable that we create, when things change, we need that view to actually update automatically. And that's why we make it observable, so the view can observe it and change accordingly. But when we create our sound manager, we're actually not going to have anything in our, in our sound manager that changes the view. So because of that, we don't need to actually observe it, and we don't need to make it observable. So I'm going to delete this observable object, and I'm going to remove this at state object. And to go one step even further, right now, if we leave this code here, we are going to initialize a new sound manager every time we go to the, the sounds bootcamp view. And then if we wanted to use a sound manager on another view, we could then initialize another sound manager. But there's actually going to be nothing in the sound manager that is unique to this view. So when we have a sound manager class, we're going to make it generic so that we can use it on any screen in our app across our entire app. And because of that, it's actually more efficient instead of to, instead of initializing a new sound manager in the view, we're going to create something called a singleton. And up here, I'm going to type static, let instance equals sound manager, open and close the parentheses. And what this is doing, this is creating a single instance of the sound manager. So we are initializing it once right here. And then every time we want to use our sound manager, we're going to access it through this instance. This way we create it once for our entire application instead of initializing a new one on every single screen. So there's a lot of talking just to get to this one line of code, but now we have our sound manager and we have an instance created and let's add some functions into the sound manager to actually play some sounds. And the first thing we need to do is actually import a new framework. We're going to import a V kit and this comes with Xcode by default and it's from Apple and the a stands for audio. The V stands for video audio video kit. And in this kit is a bunch of, really handy components that we can use to play sounds and videos on our app. So the first thing we need to do is create a variable to hold something called an AV player. So we'll say var player and it will be of type 
AV audio player. And let's just make it optional for now. So this is our AV player. And you can think of that kind of as like your iTunes or like a Walkman. So it plays music, but now we need to tell it what to actually play. So let's create a funk called play sound. Open and close parentheses, open the brackets. And the main thing we need to do in this function is set up our player. So we'll say player equals AV audio player. We're initializing a new one here. We will open the brackets and then we have a couple completions and we're looking for the contents of completion. And the two things to note here is one is that we need a URL where the, where the audio file is actually saved. And the second thing to note is that it throws, which means it can throw an error. So we need to handle any case where we get an error. So let's click the contents of here and we're going to need a URL. So let's set up a URL here. We'll say let URL equals, and we actually don't have any sounds or URLs just yet. So right now I'm just gonna create a blank URL and I'm just gonna use the string completion. Let's just leave it a blank string. And this is an, and creating these URLs is optional. So we're just gonna wrap it in a guard let URL equals that else return. We're going to update this URL in a second, but let's pass this URL into here. We're going to get one more error message that this call can throw and it is not marked with a try. So all we need to do is put it as try because we're going to try to set up an audio player. And then we need to catch all of the errors that are thrown from this. So to do that, we just create a do open the brackets. We put all of our do statements inside. And then we catch the errors. So we'll do catch and then open the brackets. And we can actually say catch let error. And this would create a variable for the error that would catch here. And we can print that out. We can print and say error playing sound. And then I will do a backslash open close parentheses and we'll print out the error dot localized description. So if there's an error, so if there's an error, it will just tell us this and then print out the actual error. And we need one more line of code here. So after we set the player with that new sound file, we just need to call player.play. And it is optional, but we know it won't be optional if this succeeds because we're setting it here. So we can just leave this as is and it will play. And the final thing we need to do is just update this URL. So I'm going to download some sound files from the internet. I'm going to link the URLs in the caption below if you want to use the same sound files that I'm using. Um, I just went to this website called freesoundslibrary.com. I'm not affiliated with them at all. And the URL I'm at right now is backslash tada-sound. And on this website is basically just a bunch of free audio sounds that you can use. And it's really nice. They have, you are allowed to use this sound free of charge, royalty free in your products. Uh, so it's a nice, just handy website to know about to get some free sounds. So I'm going to use this Tada sound and I'm just going to, let's play it first. Nothing special here. Uh, let's download that MP3. And then I'm going to go to one more page, which is uh, freesoundslibrary.com backslash barum dash And I'm just going to play this sound <laughs> and then download this one as well. So I'll link both of those in the comments below if you want to use the same sounds. But any sound audio file that you have that is .mp3 will work for what we're doing. And once you have them all downloaded, we just need to get them into our application. So I have them saved on my desktop right here and it's tada-sound.mp3 and badum-s.mp3. I'm just going to rename these uh, just to make it a little easier here. And I'm going to make this first one just called tada, all lowercase. And the second one just going to be uh, badum, all lowercase. And we don't need to rename it, but it's just a little bit easier. And then we got to bring these into our app. So first in our app here, let's right click on the navigator. Let's create a new group. Let's call this sounds. 
And then in this sounds folder, I'm just going to drag and drop both of these sounds right on in to this folder. Now it's important when you get to this screen that you do copy items if needed. This will copy them into your project. Let's, cre let's keep create groups and make sure that you add to target, which means we're going to actually embed them into this application. So make sure this is checked, click finish. And now you should have both of these here. And if you click on them, you should be able to play them straight through Xcode. So if I press this play button at the bottom, that one works. That one works as well. And now we can jump into our sounds bootcamp. Instead of this, this blank URL, we're going to access this button and this tada uh, URL in our application. So to do that, let's delete this URL and we're going to call a bundle, which is the bundle of our app dot main dot URL for resource with extension. And I will make this a little bit bigger here so it's easier to see. All right. And for resource, this is just the name of this is just the name of the file. So we have tada.mp3 and bottom.mp3. Let's do tada first. So I'm just going to literally type in tada as a string. And the extension as a string is .mp3. This is not rocket science, guys. We're literally just we're literally just referencing the exact URL that we want, which is this tada. So when we click play sound, it's going to create the URL for this tada. Then it's going to try to put that URL into the audio player and then play it. All right, let's open up our canvas. And when we click on play sound one, we're going to play that tada. So down back in our view, when we click on play sound one, Let's add some logic here. So as I mentioned before, when we access this sound manager, we're going to do it through this instance. We're not going to create a new sound manager. We're going to use this one. So I will call sound manager dot instance and then I press the dot and then we can access everything in that class and we're just going to call play sound. Let's click play on the simulator. If I click play one, it plays. Uh, so that was pretty simple to add. And now if we want to do bottom as well, uh, all we really need to do is change this tada here to bottom and it would play the other resource. So I could create another whole function, one function to play the tada and one function to play the bottom. But instead of that, we're going to create an enum and then pass in which sound we want to play each time. So we'll create an enum, we'll call it sound option, and we will open the brackets. We'll have case tada and case bottom. And when we use this tada, we want to be able to reference a string version of it. So to do that, all we need to do is make the enum conform to string. So now there is a string version of this and we can explicitly change the string if we needed to. So if this needed to be like tada uh, underscore sound, we could make it so that this is the string version of this case. But in Swift, if you don't explicitly say this, uh, the string version will be the exact same as this, which is exactly what we need because this tada is the exact same as this tada. So now we're just going to take this sound option and pass it into our play sound. We'll say sound of type sound option. And for resource, we're just going to, instead of the tada, we're going to type in sound dot raw value. And the raw value is going to be the string version of tada or bottom. All right, going back on down to our code. When we call play sound, it's now looking for a sound. So we'll press the period, we're going to use the tada. And then for the number two, we're going to call sound manager dot instance dot play sound bottom. So let's resume the canvas. Make sure these both work. seems like they're both working perfectly. All right, guys, I'm going to zoom out here just so you can see all that code together. 
but this was actually a pretty easy video in terms of the code. It was mostly just me talking, but we created a sound manager. We created a singleton class, which is a single instance of the sound manager that we can use throughout our entire app. So whether we're on this view or on another view, we just need to call sound manager instance. Inside the sound manager, we created an enum with all the options for our sounds. And then we have a quick little function to get these sounds from our bundle and then play them. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, as always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.